Heavenly Father, we come before you today to do the county's business. We ask that you guide us and show us the way that things need to be done for the best of our community. I ask that you be with those that protect us, protect our country. I ask that you be with Israel and those in Israel as they go through what they're going through. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. 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 Pledge of allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God. Indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Honor the Texas flag. I <laughs> okay, at this time, with uh, any person with business before the court not scheduled on the agenda, they speak to the court, no formal action can be taken on these items at this meeting. Each speaker will be limited to three minutes. <laughs> not seeing any papers, so we will move on to your presentation and discussion of the department head, committee, and board reports. What's up? Lots of stuff going on. <laughs> Any discussion on those? I think that is a no. Silence. <laughs> <laughs> silence. All right, uh, court consider approval of previous court minutes. Did you see any errors? I didn't see any. I didn't. Oh, not this time. This time you're on this time. That's good. Don't get too Okay, court discuss and consider increasing project schedule and staffing. I have one thing I need to uh, have the commissioners start doing on your project sheets. This came up with the outside auditors. I need y'all to make sure that each piece of equipment has its own line. Um, even if it's the same operator going from one to the other, they're arguing that that one operator couldn't be on two pieces of equipment for 10 hours. I'm arguing it with them because I've told them, you know, they're, like if it's a loader loading a belly dump, obviously you have the belly dump there and you have the loader and you have to have both to do it, even if it's one operator. But um, for future, we could just put them on separate lines instead of putting them together on the same line. That way, it lacks. It's a little bit more transparent. And then, if there's a way of making sure that okay, they weren't on this belly dump for the ten hours they were there, six hours, and they were on this for four hours or whatever it is, we'll just make sure that we're a little bit more um, accurate in tracking those numbers for. Tax dot had no problems with it. They've approved all the payments. And they've sent it back. The outside owners are the ones questioning it on a single file audit. So how are we? I'm do still it? I'm still arguing it right now. With them. How are we going to do it if, if like Dale's blocking? The, 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 just write it on their separate line and then put uh, traffic control beside the pickup. Can like still pick ten yes. hours? Yes, yes. Okay. you can still count that. As those were acceptable. They said. It was where it was two pieces of equipment, okay. and then obviously a truck and a belly dump. You're full. <coughs> you use the truck to pull the trailer. I mean, that's, to me, that's just don't show they don't get in 20 hours. <laughs> yeah, no, and, and, and it does have to match their time sheets. Like right. they they pull the time records, and it has to like verify back to that, which we haven't had a problem with that. And for the road and bridge stuff, it's just what they're trying to say. And I went back through all of 2023. There was only five instances out of all of the project sheets for 2023 that they had two pieces of equipment at the same time. Each one of them 
I have argued with it, you know, okay, I don't agree that you can't count that. I also give them their phone number so they can call them, talk to them about it, and so they can explain themselves. Um, it's not my job to go out and micromanage. Uh, Y'all know what your equipment is. I do. Ha I have no idea what a maintainer is, and honestly, I don't want to know. So, but I believe that y'all know. Also, use the 2023 FEMA rate forms. They have gone up a lot. A piece of equipment that on the 2019 was at like 26 something was 126 something wow. an hour. So use the wow. 2023. FEMA rate forms. Which reminds me, on the uh, <coughs> park project, the trails, make sure and use the one that has the heading, uh, recreational yes. trails. Uh, yes, I have separate forms. I have the Texas Parks and Wildlife Recreational Trails one, and I have the Texas Hex dot road grant forms. Um, so if you see, if you get a road grant one, don't use that on the text on the bike trail. Use the recreation one because we have to track them all separately. So, where you have a piece of equipment like front end loader, and then you have an asphalt zipper that attaches to that front end loader, you want to keep those separate as well? They need to be on separate lines. I would argue still that, I mean, if you're pulling the zipper, you're using the front end loader or whatever it is that you're pulling the zipper with, you're going to use two pieces of equipment. I'm, like separate. I said, I'm still arguing this with them. It will likely get sent up to one of the partners for them to call and um, determine it, but we've had this grant, we had Cabin Road grant prior to this one, we've done this the same way. This year they've decided that they're not allowing it and I disagree with them. Okay. So. <laughs> Good enough. I think I've already said, always separated them anyway. I, I think some of them, they're just like doubled on, and it, like I said, it was only five out of a whole year's worth. Sure. So. Yeah, they did. That was one of the questions. I was like, you have to have the truck hold the belly. Track the pulls the truck. Belly up the trailer. Yeah. They accepted my explanation, didn't they? Yes. They did accept the explanation on that. They accepted the explanation about them using the pickups for traffic control parking on there for that. That it, if it's two pieces of equipment, I think it was a maintainer and a roller or something. I don't honestly remember, but those two, they did not accept the uh, explanation on it. So then we had to go into a little bit more detail and look at all of the projects for the whole year and see how many times it was done to see if they were going to call it a finding. And if it was a substantial finding, then they would report it to state and we would potentially not get a state grant. So... That's a marginal event. It's not. <laughs> All right. Anything else on every project schedule? Yep. Most of those are all over. Got one from Terry. Yep. We're down at sleep water, milling and loading. Uh, one from precinct three and one from. We still got our old one. Like the guy backed out on buying it, but thank God we needed it. That's the way they usually did. <laughs> Let's get into new business. We nearly got to the double, double A's. You know, we went A through X. So, uh, of course, consider accepting donations to county entities. Um, this is Senior Center, $2,460.50. Uh, Sperry County EMS, uh, donation of $500 of miscellaneous supplies, shelving, and bins. And then uh, the library got DVDs, books, paperbacks, and magazines, and six hundred dollars in various donations. Motion to accept. The motion to accept. The motion to accept. All in favor. All right. Court to hold a public hearing on designation 
of a reinvestment zone to be known as the 2024 Inadale Reinvestment Zone 1, scurry as described in Exhibit A and proposed tax abatement agreement. So we are at 1009, is that a check, Melody, or 1010? 1010. 1010. We will go into this for the hearing. And let Jake come up and talk to us. Where y'all want me to go? Oh, uh, wherever you're comfortable. Um, you want to come over here, probably, so everybody can see. <coughs> you do have copies of all of this with you. Um, proposing a solar and a best, correct? That's correct. Uh, <clears throat> so, for those know, I'm Jake Letter. I'm an attorney out of Sweetwater, and I have a client, Solvent Energy. Uh, who's looking to develop a hybrid solar and storage project in the Inadale area, so south, the southeast Scurry County. A little bit's gonna be in Mitchell, most of it's in Scurry. Um, so they're here, we're looking for some relief on the property taxes for the first 10 years. The first step is to set the reinvestment zone. That's what we're here to do to ask, or to do it today, but I'm happy to answer any questions about the reinvestment zone, the abatement, the company. Um, we're an open book, so. So what else have they done here? Uh, I know it's familiar. They haven't built anything yet in the U.S. Um, they are a Swiss company, or they're a French company based out of Switzerland. They've done a lot of projects in Europe, nothing in Texas, nothing in the U.S. They have, I think, 20 project sites throughout the state. 18 of those are pure battery sites, and two of them are hybrid solar and battery, the one here, and then one in Nolan and Taylor County as well. Um, you know, when they initially came over here, they were looking more towards solar, but they found that this region is the least attractive of the state for new renewable development. Um, so they've moved their business model away from solar, more into the battery storage, but they are still pushing forward with the two projects they have under lease. This one in Idale and the one in Nolan County, which is out near, going to be near Wingate. So, okay. Um, I did the breakdown, can I do but, um, so you got my last email i didn't get your last email okay um so the concern was the amount of mm -hmm. uh the payments on those it's significantly less than what we had been to sure I, and i understand that um uh, that's what I've been told by my client to propose is an 80% abatement, which would be those those payments, however we structure it. Um, I'm not gonna tell you that we're, we don't have room for negotiation, but that's, that's what I have authority to, to offer. Um, but I think we have some room for negotiation on that. Um, you know, I would mention that, you know, total tax revenue between both of these, they're gonna be, if they get built, they built at the same time. You know, we've asked for separate abatements just for, the way they're going to finance the build of the project, but the solar and the best would get built at the same time. And that's a total over the life of the project. I believe it's uh, almost 13 million in taxes to the county. And the relief of what they're requesting is a little over 5 million. Um, so they're asking for a, about a 5 million tax break and then return an additional six to seven in tax revenue to the county plus to um, WPC. I think this is in Roscoe ISD. As well as to the hospital, um, so I think the total tax revenue to all of the counties is almost forty million, um, and the tax relief to them would be about five point seven. Okay. So uh, per megawatt for the solar, it's five forty, mm -hmm. and then did you have a breakdown on the other? Thing? The other one's 200 megawatt, right? Uh, yes. The breakdown is 453.50 for the best. Um, and the solar side could increase. Um, we had a little bit of a land control issue. There's a dispute over some easements. Mm -hmm. So what we propose right now is worst case scenario if we can't build it out. I think that project was intended to be about 200 megawatts as well. Um, but we're fighting over over an easement issue and it might cut the project in half. We'll have that worked out relatively soon, but um, so the numbers on the solar could be substantially higher still. Um, so the court knows the last um, solar we did was 1540 
I mean, fifteen hundred and forty dollars per megawatt, and that payment would be at one hundred megawatts. If it's it's one hundred and fifty four thousand. And then the last best was a fifty one fifteen. And that's two hundred megawatts. That's one hundred and seventy thousand two thirty. So whatever y'all think on those numbers, if y'all want to have a conversation about that. Well, obviously how we can cut them slack we were cutting by We did go down on best. What right. were the size of those projects? Do you all recall? Oh, five and a half sections out of here. Fifty. Let me pull up that email I sent you. It had two of them. Like did y'all do a solar project? Like, I think it was 360 megawatts. The battery site was 160. Um, so the solar site was bigger, battery's a little bit smaller. Um, so I'm not sure that they haven't expanded the battery out here. Um, they told me in court it was going to be 64 of these containers with batteries. Now they're talking about 80. Okay. Or 84. Mm -hmm. So I think it's going to get a lot somewhat bigger. Than somewhat bigger, we're sure. Talking about. Um, and, but you're asking for an 80%? That, that's, a, that's our initial. Not 100%. Not 100%. Well, we're asking it's a. So that makes it. We've structured it as a pilot payment. Um, so it would still be 100% payment in lieu of taxes, but the. Payment back in the county would be a little bit of an 80 cent, 80 percent abatement. But we're open if y'all want to do a traditional abatement versus a pilot program. Um, we view that as entirely within the court's discretion on what best works for the court. We would do a pilot program even with 100 percent. The amounts that are in these two agreements are not. Are these are these the two you're talking about? These two different ones in here, right, Dan? Once the best, once the yes, ma'am. Mm -hmm. Well, both of them say solvent. I don't know. Uh, they do. This fifty-four thousand on one pilot payment and ninety thousand seven hundred on the other. So one pass the the battery right. and one is the solar system itself. We give a break on the best because it's not as much profit right. doing it, but it is profitable for the our community because solar that the cloud is zero power. You know, and I know it's not in the abatement, but I do know they're willing to um, make donations to county organizations, um, to charities, um, you know, any way they want to be a, a good member of the community. Um, so I know we have flexibility there as well to you know, set up some type of scholarship or donation fund. Um, you know, so to the extent we want to think outside of the box, you know, remember so up here in the tax portion of it, they have. They're willing to be creative for work with the county to make the best deal possible. So. I don't know how you would, could even figure it without visiting with the appraisal district and finding out how they appraise these if they even know yet. Right. And we can come back to make that. it, yeah, to make it, you know, the. Same right. as what you know, nothing we do here today would be binding on the abatement. It's sure. just reinvestment zone. Yeah. So we'll take at least another 30 days, yeah. probably more than that, sure. to be able to get to that stage. Oh yeah. yeah. 
Yeah. But I wanted you to know that I wanted the court to let you know where sure where the courts. No, I understand that. So, uh, yeah. But I don't see a reason why we couldn't do the reinvestment. Sure. Okay. I agree. You know, and when it comes to the abatement itself, um, you know, if y'all have, you know, what y'all want to look for, if it wants to be those numbers you talked about, something different, let us know, and I'll run it by my client will run it down and see what they do with it. Okay. Thank you. Sure. Thank you. 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 Thank so we we'll want to work with y'all. Um, anything else on the in the public hearing? Does anybody else want to say anything? Okay. We'll go ahead and close the public hearing at 1020. Thank you, Jay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you all. Well, I certainly believe we should do the investment zone, reinvestment zone. And so I make a motion that we designate land as described in Exhibit A as a reinvestment zone to be, to be named 2024 Ida Reinvestment Zone Number One, Scurry, pursuant to Texas Tax Code Sections 312 at C4. And proposed tax abatement agreement. Do you not want to read off all can you, of it? Can you keep the name? Can you keep the name? <laughs> keep the name? Yeah, that we get these projects and they change names every other day. <laughs> <laughs> we don't know where they're at because we don't know who they are. <laughs> if we were looking for one the other day. <laughs> it wasn't the right name. Yeah. All right, so that's a motion. Is there a second? Second. Oh, no, I do not want to. <laughs> it's a packet. Yeah. Well, y'all know where to track me down. I'm not too far. So yeah, that's like, true. Right. If you can't ever locate my client, you can locate me. All right, thank you, Jason. Thank you all. I'm gonna not gonna make you stay for the rest of this. <laughs> the rest of it's gonna be a minute. You know what? I'm on the other side. It usually uh. They can be pretty long. Yes, sir. <laughs> yes, sir. All right. I have to charge everybody. Appreciate it. Oh, we'll try to see you after that uh, the resolution when y'all get a chance. Yes, sir. All right. I sure Thank y'all. Appreciate it. Correct. <laughs> Consider going after bids on fuel oil increase, Terry. And guys, this has gotten to be a, <laughs> a situation that we got into before. And uh, when we went out for bids, it said diesel. Uh, it says highway use. Okay, didn't put specifications in there. I'm changing all that up. Um, to me, diesel is diesel. I don't care if you got biodiesel, if you've got uh, red diesel. Are clear diesel. We want you to bid whatever products that you have. I mean, it's that simple to me, but it wasn't to these guys. And so I went back and I put in clear diesel, red diesel, but highway usage specs. We don't want them to bring some junk diesel up here, which I don't think they could anyway. Uh, Ultra wasn't in there, Ultra Low, which is now uh, part of the uh, specs that have to be there. And I don't think they have anything else. These, these plants don't produce ultra low low sulfur it's it's just ultra low sulfur diesel you know the the we did have a different diesel that that had a lot more sulfur in it but even now the maritime ships cannot use it mm -hmm. and that's why our diesel has gone through the roof and cost uh, to them gasoline is unleaded regular no ethanol no 87 no premium no spring whatever to me, gasoline is gasoline. We want you to tell us all your product and your prices and, and what difference does it make if it's red or clear and red's a little bit more because you put dye in and it costs you 0 0.002 cents, you know, less than half a cent for it. Um, we just want you to bid the products you have. One company called and said, well, we've got 40 different oil products. And I said, we don't care. Name them all and what their prices are. We may want them. We don't know what kind of equipment, what those specs are going to be in the future, even during a year, a year. So just name the products you have. We'll pick and choose. We don't need you to pick and choose what you're going to, because that's all they did. They bid on clear diesel only. 
So we buy red diesel from anybody we want to. They didn't, they bid on uh, regular unleaded only, 10% ethanol, E10. So they said, oh, ethanol, my gracious, uh, uh, or ethanol free. We would have to go all the way to love it. That'd be a lot more. What? Why didn't you bid it that way? So I'm fixing the specs. Uh, if we agree today that we should go back out for bids, then, because what happened was they, they, got me, they, they gave me red diesel and they sent me the invoice, but they didn't send the company the company papers with it showing rack invoice price like we always get, like is mm -hmm. uh, that you have to have if we're going to pay you. And I call them and tell them, I just thought it was going to be a simple thing. Call me back two or three hours later. Nope, we're not sending you. That was not to. We did not bid. Red diesel. So <laughs> we're going to clarify this for these guys. And then if they don't send us the company document, then the, according to the county attorney, we can come back and say, okay, we're going to award this to the second cheapest bidder. <coughs> I make a motion that we go out for fuel and diesel, for fuel and oil. Terry, do you want me to send you a copy of the bid packets that the other counties have sent me so you can see? I can look at that. I mean, I've already went through most of ours and, okay. and redid it. Um, There's one that it's pretty, like, it, it's clarified out. That's so yeah. sad. Yeah. <laughs> they probably dealt with it. Yeah. You know, the thing of it is, they're the professionals. If we say we want diesel, if you don't know that we just won't, don't want, I mean, if you're going to, a county that doesn't run dive diesel in machines uh if you if you have a question i mean asked this many questions there was 50 of them and i answered them but they didn't ask anything they didn't call back and say well did, did y'all just want clear diesel no call them ask if you know you're the professional tell us mm -hmm. and so <coughs> we're going to get it right and then if they won't do what's right we'll we'll do what's right um so one thing, just as long as the court understands that it, uh, something else the county attorney said was as long as you understand that uh, we believe, the court believes that they have substan substantially violated the uh, agreement, the contract, is we can go out for fuel and oil. And yes. if they are not able to provide red dye. Can they, in the meantime... Do they still have the use on coast or? We, we didn't, they didn't bid. So uh, to me, we're not going to use 50,000 a piece between now and the time we get our bids back in. I think oh, we, yeah. I hope you're not using No. <laughs> and so to me, I, now, I don't know what I, that I didn't ask. Mike, but they're not going to send us. I know, like, I know it's a little bit different because it's not the same as when we would bid at the beginning of every year. But when we do go out for bid prices at the beginning of the year, the um, current bid that we were under was still in place until mm -hmm. we received and accepted new bids. So, but they basically didn't follow their own stuff for the bid. So I don't, I mean, I don't know. Well, if they didn't bid for red diesel, then you can, I guess, yeah. can you buy red exactly. no, think, legacy or yeah. The only thing I got out of them was, well, you can't run. Uh, it's illegal for you to run red dot diesel. It's your, not. Oh, and and, it's and not. I said, uh, wait <laughs> a minute. We're paying. We are collecting through the auditor. We're collecting every quarter. Mm -hmm. uh, what? And we report this. Every this is not their concern. Yeah. They are not regulators. They are just they go to supposed supplies with, and then we take care of the law benefit as the comptroller allows because they as San Angeles already said they send us the form every quarter and we give them the, the miles yeah because the girls uh, the 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 otherwise you've got to have how many tenants at your location okay. and we have a motion in a second all in favor you didn't forget <laughs> <laughs> you're good thank you all right, court to discuss and consider a proposal and contract with Copile Technologies Incorporated for imaging and indexing of criminal case files. Okay. Um, what this is, I was already in, been working with this for a year, and Copile, it is a $200,000 project. <coughs> Copile is on the buy board, and so I've talked to Angela, so we're good there. They've done district clerk stuff, they've done some of my other stuff, so we've already had multiple contracts with this company. Um, 
it has come to the attention there was sometime during some of the projects from I think it all started actually back with Ableton to Odyssey to iDocket back to Odyssey. We have a large area of cases that are not in our system. Uh, so we've added those into this project to get those and they're going to scan all of our old criminal, which is the law. That's the reason a lot of um, the records management and records preservation was created was to go back and get the old criminal cases and preserve them. Um, so we're gonna, they're gonna scan them. They're going to index them into with Odyssey. They'll work with Tyler to have, so that we will have everything in the computer all the way back. So we can't destroy the originals, but we will be able to remove some of them and put them in storage and have more room in our office too. But it will also pick up those cases that <laughs> didn't get scanned in in the past. So I'm just asking to approve this and I believe there's a, it is, like I said, it is coming from my records management preservation fund, which is strictly, that's the only thing I can do with it. This is the old Kodak company, right? That, isn't that what he told us whenever he came the first it time? It might be, this, it might this, be. That's where the KO comes from. from yeah. I thought that was pretty interesting. It's a pretty interesting place to go walk, to look and everything, how they do how all they that. How they do it. Yeah. It's pretty well, amazing. I make the motion that we enter into a wall to profile technologies for imaging and indexing the case file. Second. All in favor. All right, court to discuss and consider a commissioner's court policy requiring prior court approval for non budgeted expenditures or lot item transfers over 50000 to non budgeted expenditures. Capital item or equipment for all departments and elected officials. Doug, you asked for this to be on the agenda? We said our expense at $10,000. Um, states so we can go to 50000 uh, 10000 and much more. <laughs> so, that's that's one reason why I like to break it back up. Well, on top of that, you have your line of transfers and your budget amendments are in every packet, every court meeting, and so you're already you're doing it. Right. Uh, I agree that we should go back to the limit that the state allows. Looks like a so we made the motion in. I'll make the motion. All right. Jeff seconded me for the discussion. Say all in favor. All opposed. Of course, discuss and consider a proposal from Guardian Security Solutions for the Scurry County DA Annex and the Scurry County Recreational Trust. Um, should have that in your packet. Guardian sent two proposals that I requested from them. One of the proposals actually was requested from the uh, um, district attorney on a move across the street, and that is for some cameras and for uh, door locks. So when someone goes in the front door, um, they would uh, have to be buzzed in by Jera instead of going through both doors. And, and uh, so it'd be front door, back door, and a camera at the back door, I believe is what should show Yeah, so one at the front door and one at the back door. And it was 14,000, I believe. Yeah, 14,734. So. <laughs> And then the other one is for the recreational trust. That would be for locks on the bathroom. Um, 
And I'm, I'm iffy on this one. Uh, the locks on the bathroom. So the it, it's mag locks that would um, you set it for thus or dawn to dusk. They lock at dusk. They unlock at dawn. Um, that way they're not having to go and lock and unlock. And this would be a case to see if we want to do that for the rest of the bathroom door so they don't, they don't have to do those so they would lock it. Dusk and open at dawn. Uh, the other is for cameras, one for one facing the parking lot, and the other would face the uh, the pump track. And the idea is to deter any kind of damage that somebody might do, or if they do damage or do anything illegal in the parking lot, we have video evidence of that. Um, the cameras have caught several people in the park, called several things since we put cameras there. Um, so that has been pretty good to have. This one is a whole lot higher. It's 34,000, 35. And so I'm, I'm a bit iffy. That could be split out uh, where we just did one, either the cameras or the locks. Um, or we can just wait on that one. Would this the grant cover the cost of the it, guardian? It the was never, it wasn't put in the grant. So I don't know that it would. So, um, so I would think you're going to leave cameras out there. Mm -hmm. There's nothing else. Okay. Well, I'm going to have lots to. Yeah. Well, uh, yeah. I mean, now those locks work with these drinks. I agree. Yeah. Yeah. Which news is going to come from? Oh. Yeah. yeah. So, you get what you pay for, right? And I've looked and I've found those locks online for a whole lot cheaper than that, but then you still have to get them installed. Um, so, uh, <clears throat> did that come out of the uh, permanent improvements? It can come out from an improvement. Um, that's basically where it would have to come from. Right. Because it, for, for either one of them. Yeah. Uh, because you can't even use courthouse security for the DA's office because it's not no longer in the courthouse. Um, so it could come out of there. That would be unless you've got it approved um, as an addition to the grant for the park. Right. Only, um, and that I, I don't can, know how the process, how long that process takes to get them to approve that. I can send that to them if we approve it. I could go ahead and send it to them and see if they would do an amendment to it or if, they, if it would be an allowable expense because it is part of the bathrooms, the, the uh locks would be. And there's still is there still a lot of stuff to do out there? So, I mean, is there a lot more costs coming to do? Because, I, I mean, I haven't been out there, so I don't know. Right. I, I know. So the biggest grant expense was the pump track. The 110000 Yeah, that. and the bathrooms. And then we did uh, had some lighting that was going to be some expense. But we're not doing uh, as much of the lighting. We went a different direction on the lighting with the two white poles in the parking lot instead of the solar right. lighting on there. Save twenty thousand dollars there. So I mean, that's so, twenty of the thirty-four. Right. So potentially, so, they may allow. Potentially, they may allow. Right. So, and then there's a couple other things there. Well, I'm not sure the last. Um. What I put before I couldn't find it yet. <coughs> the protege to the ODI and rail system control That's just the lock itself. If they go in and tear up your bathroom, just going to keep pushing that. Yeah, absolutely. Where does that money come from? Right. Well, if we. What kind of money is it? Yes. I don't know um, currently what we have in there. Um, I, I could find out to detail, you know, but I'm not really sure what we have in there. I've been working on something else before the meeting. 
You're talking about permit improvements. Yes. Okay. Uh, if they, I'd run it back through the grant and see what you get from them. Yeah. Yeah. And then if not, we can come back <laughs> and take it out of capital improvements. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, it is. So for three of them, there's there 2,300, just the the lot. Yeah. Well, when I said, my goodness, it's expensive, he said, well, you can break it out. Just do a little math and I'll run that. I don't know what's what here. <laughs> it still has left this left now. It does, yeah. yeah. But, I mean, that would be my fault. I don't know how long it's going to take to get an answer well, from the grant. So, it is, if it takes too long. <coughs> permanent. Permanent. There's a difference. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, because you know, somebody gets in that bathroom, I can deal with that in the park. Yeah, and that's that's what I'm saying. If, if we, I would request that we go ahead and get approval either way today, and then and then they destroy the bathrooms that they're at the pavilion, yes. like a couple of times. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, and that way we go ahead and get it done. And if if, if we can get it through the grant, we go ahead and pay for it there. If not, then it we go ahead and pay for it. So. <laughs> <laughs> so the, the magnetic lock would actually automatically turn off at a certain time, correct. rather than somebody having to remember to go exactly and lock up the door. Yes, sir. If that would work, that would be pretty good. It would. <laughs> yeah. It would have that price. It's not going to work. It works here. Yeah. So that bathroom costs what? Oh, uh, on total, it's going to be about $30,000. Yeah. Yeah. For it to protect them. One surprise cost one. I was quoted one price and got a higher price. What was actually done? So, uh, what was that? Uh, this motion and second. Are you moving the DA office also? This DA office and yes. bathrooms or just bathrooms? Yeah, you, you don't want to do them all at the same time. Do yeah, you know, the, the trip okay. charge. So. <clears throat> Thank you. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you, Mayor. Yeah, so that across the street. Yeah. <laughs> he said what you said. So is it yes. your motion or is it yours? Yes. It'll be my motion. Okay. Okay. It's silly good. Yeah. Okay. It is on first. So uh, the motion is to accept the proposal from Guardian Solutions for the Scurry County DA Annex and the Scurry County Recreational Trust. All in favor? Any opposed? No. All right, thank you. I appreciate that. All right, here comes some fun stuff. Court to discuss and consider action to approve the use of the construction manager at risk method of contracting as authorized. Okay, I'm going to tell you, I'm going to stop and tell you that an attorney wrote this. <laughs> as authorized by subchapter F, chapter 2269 of the Texas Government Code, it has the project delivery method that provides the best value to Scurry County for the emergency medical services station project. Authorize the issuance of the one step request for proposals for construction manager at risk services for the emergency med medical services station project. Authorize the selection committee to evaluate and score the received proposals according to the selection criteria and the request for proposals and negotiate the contract for recommendations to the commissioner's court. Second. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to go back through that. Basically, you're going to go out for proposals for the MS building. Yes. For the construction area. Yes. <laughs> yes. Yes. Uh, you got that on all that. <laughs> I pretend to be an attorney all the time. The committee would still be the same committee that uh, was in the whole process that we've done. Please stop. <laughs> Let's let's go to this. If you'll look at the screens, this is uh, the concept, the concept. This is the start of the plans. So that's the uh, front of the facility. There are three bays that have two. You could fit two ambulances in there each. Front door would be right here. This part is a mechanical room. Um, 
That's all the HVAC. Um, I'm going to blow it up and then move it over a little bit. That over there, so the bays there, you have two pull-through bays. So there's four doors on that on the south side, three doors on the north side. The fourth door over here would be where they wash the vehicles. Um, and the other three, would they pull through out the other side. Um, there's a decon, a fire riser, a maintenance room. Um, and then back over on the other side, you have a mechanical courtyard, a mechanical and electrical. Uh, on the north side, I'm sorry, on the south side, you have a living room, sleeping rooms all the way down, a corridor, a laundry, supply, a workout area, two bathrooms, and then the kitchen and dining area. On the north side of it, you have their workstations, a conference room, and a classroom. That's going to be one of those uh, expandable doors that goes all the way across to split it or open it up. The dispatch area, offices. At the front door, they'll come in, enter that room there, and there is a uh, window right there where they'll be able to make payments or get records or whatever they need to do there. Uh, storage rooms, break room, another restroom, and janitorial. That one I'll just try to be small here. That must be Josie's. No, <laughs> <laughs> uh, Cindy, Josie's the one with the bigger office space oh, right now. <laughs> that, that could be hers. I don't know. She may demand it. Yeah. Um, there's three different occupancies, um, and those are spelled out. S2 is where they. Uh, Ambulances are R2 is residential, Group B is office space. Let me get to where. We will have the gas meter where Jason can't run over. <laughs> <laughs> it was not his gas meter. <laughs> and he was he was avoiding a dog this night. <laughs> um, this is the uh, West End. That's what it'll look like there. They'll have the fence around there to kind of cover up the ACs and all of that. Um, this is the south side employee entrance, employee entrance, and the four doors. North side, the three bays, and the uh, entrance for visitors or uh, customers. There it is. That's the one I was kind of wanting to get to. Um, this shows your entrances and exits. So um, 37th Street at the top there, that's north. Uh, they'll come in off the already off, off the drive that's already existing. Um, anybody visiting can park up front. Employee parking will be in back. And so they're going to tie in in two different spots into the existing drive there at the law enforcement center. And then they're going to tie into that drive over at the fuel station as well. So, any thoughts or questions? Yeah, I've got one. Okay. Not on that particular thing, but uh, okay. the, uh, there in the mechanic room, are, are we going to have a generator there? It's pretty important to be able to charge the stuff that goes down. Certainly, the blood work center has one. I think that's something the uh, health unit has. We need one here. Or at least, uh, we're not talking about that. But <coughs> EMS definitely. Needs one. If the power goes down for any extended period of time, they can't yeah. keep their ambulances up. Okay. I will make sure that that is in there. Okay. There's the layout again. Um, <coughs> thank you, Terry. Yes. That's good. It's 10,500 square feet. It will be in line with the sheriff's department, and it will the exterior will match the sheriff's department. So it's look very similar to that. In the tree. Are they going to still use the um, armory training the training center at the armory? Because I've seen there's training. Uh, a room in there. Yeah. yeah, I think the intention is to move it over here. So emails. then that would be open for I believe so. That's what he told me. Yeah. And then can the employees use their workout room? 
not their employees, but county employees. That's a good question. <laughs> just wondering. Just a just a question. Just curious. I just wonder how many actually use that work hour. I would use it. Uh, I know here. that we would. We got one at the fire station. That we didn't use that a lot. It didn't get. Yeah, that's what I thought. Do they use yours? It's semi good. Anything that's real work gets hard to get done. But there is a new solution. Well, it's an old solution, really, and it's so simple. And it actually is found in, in uh, studies that it actually affects every cell in your body, and that's rebounded. Just jumping a few minutes every hour or so, maybe one or two minutes, can make it. I mean, get the lymphatic system going, and, and it affects every cell in your body. Yeah, but it hurts. You do it. Is that <laughs> really good? Yeah. No, I do it every morning at five o'clock. So. That's great. What happened the first day you come in? Oh, man, don't be lying. <laughs> <laughs> I've been sore for 30 Jim years. Is, Jim Roby does has the same effect. It's a little harder Jim on your joints. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You, you can ride that pump track for 10 don't minutes do, and get the same cardio effect as 30 minutes. Minute minute <laughs> when you're really good at it. Yeah. Um, so we would uh, have a pre-proposal conference on May 6th. That's where uh, we would discuss what is actually, uh, and Kenny said he'd be here on May 6th for that meeting at 9 a.m. And then this one actually is wrong. It's got, there's another page at the back that shows May 10th is when the uh, proposal will be due. I'm sorry, the questions will be due about it. And then May 17th, the proposals will be due from anybody. So it's a fairly quick process. Well, I hope Sadalco is, is going to bid on it because that's the most amazing company I've ever seen to build something. Really? They built that jail six months earlier. Yeah. Nobody did. That's true. They said we could charge them 30000 a day for every day that they were over what they said that day. It was under budget as well. I mean, yeah. six months early under budget. Oh, my goodness. Six months early. May 17th. May 17th. May 10th also is when those questions are due. Yeah, May 17th is when the proposals are due. Um, it's a little light reading for you there. Um, <laughs> attachments and the titles. So, um, did you make a motion earlier? No, I think you did. I just seconded it. <laughs> Uh, yes. Any more discussion? Any more thoughts? Any more? All right, all in favor? Mm -hmm. <laughs> all right, court to discussing and serve move and transfer pickup from the library to IP and creating maintenance lines and transfer funds from library to IP. Okay. So, uh, when we talked to Jeremy, we uh, talked about uh, him leaving the vehicle. We talked about leaving the library vehicle to him and moving the line uh, for that, plus whatever funds they have. Which uh, I spoke to the folks at the library. They are not using that pickup. They don't want that pickup. They are okay with Jeremy getting that pickup. Great. Feels good because it's good <laughs> <laughs> Any discussion? I'd like a motion with for transfer of a pickup from the library to IP. Second. On the line and transfer. Um, I'll do a line on transfer for a minute. Oh. All right. All in favor? Court to discuss and consider a site deposit for rented use by private business for community recreation or entertainment. Pod. This is why you're here, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so uh, and I wish Lance was here. I, I forgot to remind him. Um, so when carnivals come to town um, and hook up to our electrical in that parking lot over there, um, there's been a couple of things. One, uh, when they turn the trucks pretty hard, it damages the parking lot. Uh, we've had it, Lance said he's had a couple of places that he had to fix the last few times we had a carnival. Um, the main issue is that uh, the carnival employees 
not as much this last year as the year before have gotten into our boxes that cut lots of electrical boxes and well, we did the same thing last year okay all right he, i think he said that damn the cost wasn't quite right. as much this last year as the year before uh where the year before it was like 2500 dollars worth of damage that they did um, and line sparking and uh having to uh it, it's something to do with the irrigation system where it was sparking and whatnot um so the idea came up of uh, a deposit, this is nice idea, they paid a deposit up front, uh, they would get that money back um, minus whatever damages um, and a percentage uh, for over, over, so if they did $2,500 damage, a 10 or 20% administrative fee for the work that the county would have to do in getting the repairs and getting it taken care of and all of that. Um, this wouldn't go apply to the annex, or not the annex, the armory or any of the inside facilities because that's already a separate deal. This would be anything that would set up outside uh, on any of the lots uh, like that and use the electrical. So um, this, the reason it's coming up now is one to get ahead of it and two there's a, a carnival that's coming into town on the 22nd so as of right now we are not sure okay. because of all the kind of stuff we were getting from the car show and right. everything we've tried calling them and they're not calling back so we i could they're always say they're coming. probably not coming okay now yeah. well they initially said yeah, they, but they were coming. yeah they were they were going to be here a week and then they changed it to two weeks and that got into parking issues for the car show and other things that are going on all at the same time in the park. So um, whether they're coming or not, we need to determine, you know, for uh, what, July? Yeah, Fourth of July and any of the others that might come through. And use us. So, so is that include like food trucks, what you buy stuff like that? Or, because they use electricity too. They do. Um, <coughs> I think it would go more towards the the larger events. Um, I mean, we you could set different ones, I guess. One for if they're going to use the big area, or if it's going to be individual. But I don't know because the chamber, y'all are the ones who set um, that for the vendors and all, right? Yes, yes, sir. Um, and y'all actually get the spaces for the vendors. Yes, sir. So we, we would be charging charging the chamber site deposit on, on, on that. <laughs> so it would be on you to make sure that nobody did any damage. That's not all we can do. So it's an old baby for a lot of things. Right, they get their money back. Yeah. So be more careful at least, wouldn't they? Right. What's a reasonable amount? Twenty five hundred. Is that reasonable? I mean, you can always go up next year. It's not enough. Well, for, for something like that, I think. But for the carnival, oh no, they, they, yeah. They got lots of damage because they they tore into the brick box or whatever. Yeah. Rewired. So, I mean, I would think that the park folks would do a little bit of supervision, making sure they're not. <coughs> Well, they, they, they do, but what, you know, they're, they're not up there all the time. In, right? So they found it and then they said, hey, what are you doing? Well, before they did, it's where they parked their campers. They right. Uh, stay in a, you know, kind of hidden. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Found out that good, man. Right. Well, that's what's like the car on the fire fail. I don't You know, to me, uh, if they're, if they're in, if they're, here in food and I assume most of them are from in Snyder, these food trucks. I mean, we're we're trying to make it better for our people. And so if you make it to where they can't do it, then mm -hmm. then our community suffers. I know you're joking. Uh <laughs> y'all like the food trucks set up a deposit anyway or uh no there's a our, our food truck like you're talking about four fourth of July. Mm -hmm. Um they pay a vendor fee. So, so yeah, everybody, vendors. all the vendors pay a vendor fee. Yeah. A lot of them have generators. Yeah. And a lot of them do use generators. Yeah. And they each get one plug <laughs> that they can't put. I mean, there's like you can't put a roaster on it. You can't because it'll 
<clears throat> flow it. So yeah. a lot of them do use generators. And you monitor that pretty well throughout. Yes. I, mean, I don't. I haven't heard of any issues with. No, sorry. So I've been there. I've been, I've been. I've been there for ten years, and we've never had an issue. So the main issue is up carnival. in the parking lot with the carnival. Is. I understand the carnival. No, no problem. Yeah, that's good. Hi, <laughs> that motion. Second. Second. <laughs> I, I mean, I agree. I think it would be with just the carnival's issue. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> well, okay. you know, you, what you want. Yeah. Well, you know, your report last night, Carl, uh, they told them not, not to do that. They put a guard around everything. And they still did. <laughs> mm -hmm. I mean, maybe they'll self-police at five thousand dollars. I don't know. They might be ten. They might not. Well, they may have to go to ten. Man, well, that, that, that was cool. my initial thought too. Really? I mean, that we never know. <laughs> but the kids do. The kids will. Well, yeah. the thing is, last year I know when we put that on the rotary or uh, lines, it's lines, clay paint. To get fixed, ah, so okay. Yeah. And the one that's probably, that. probably gonna be the one that's gonna be putting the deposit down or having to put the deposit down. What happens when somebody breaks in there and they <laughs> get themselves hurt badly? Yeah. And they sue us. I mean, that's. Yeah, I, I did that. Okay. okay. Hands a lot. What about so it, on any damages? Damages in any extra or just damages? Well, and they get the deposit back. Yeah, I mean, my only would be just part of the bag. But no, they don't do damage. Right, I agree. They just leave it to be a percentage, unless you want to give it all back to them. No, no. I would, I would say damages plus 10 or 20%. They're going to do damage. Yeah, it's, clear. It's, it's, too it's too hot. That asphalt can't stand that turning on it like that. It's going to, it's going to tear it up. That's going to get over the 5,000 deposit yes. pretty quick. It is. It can. So that's true. Depending on how much they tear down. That's true. Well, like the deal. I just, I just. Yeah. Okay. So what do you want to do? And it's just a deposit. Yes. So if they don't do it, they get it back. They get it back. But if they do damage, yeah. it's whatever it's cost plus. You want to put a percentage administrative fee for them being here? No, for or the damage. Oh, so if it's $2,500 worth of damage, it's $2,500 plus a 10 or 20% fee. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay, so tell me 10 or 20%. Which one? <laughs> 20 out of 25, I hear 30. <laughs> 20, <laughs> so, I'm sorry. So it'd be a fifth of the total if it was right. Now, is it 20% of what the damages cost or 20% yes. of the total? 20% of the damage. Oh, okay. Yeah. yeah, that's fair. I sold 20%. So what's the deposit? So it's not a straight for 10. And then it's a deposit of five or ten. Five thousand. Five thousand. Yeah, and then we're going to start with plus the twenty percent. Yeah, we wasn't getting any kind. Of and we always go work. And you know, if you go up too high, what are they going to do? They're going to charge more for their tickets for everybody. Oh, they're not going to come. Mm -hmm. All right. Or not going to come. Like I said, I could care less if they come or not. But <laughs> there are kids that really like that. They're going to burn y'all until park. Ain't no carnival. They're going to burn y'all until park. Because I was one of them. We're in the hanging room. But when you was little, you were okay. not. So we have a motion in a second. $5,000 in damages. Terry's motion? No, you're making it. Damn, Yeah, the damage. And if, if they do any damages, they pay damages plus 20%. Okay. But and they get the remainder back. Okay. All right, all in favor. I'll go for that. All right. It does not affect the chamber. It'll be one of those corrections. <laughs> uh, let me give you an update on the Texas Midwest Rural Transportation Council. 
This uh, actually is a new thing that uh, text.f has to put together, and it's county judges here in our region. So, um, the mission statement is to advise the planning and development of rural transportation needs and projects relative to the rural region served by the Midwest, which it was changed, the name was changed to Texas, West Texas, Midwest, I, I don't remember the name, but it was changed. <laughs> Midwest Texas Rural Transportation Council will communicate those needs and recommendations to all levels of government. And those are the counties, Borden, Callahan, Fisher, Haskell, Howard, Jones, Kent, Mitchell, Nolan, Curry, Shopford, Stonewall, Taylor, all within the Abilene District. And so it would be, the voting members include each of the 13 county judges um, and a minimum of seven for quorum. We're going to have meetings in March, July, and November, and we'll nominate in November projects and prior, prioritize those. And there'll be a scale of one to five or one to ten that we will discuss those, or, or that they'll be ranked. And it's projects throughout. And so we've talked about wait, waiting them because if project in Taylor County they'll have more representation than over here on our side of the district. So we're gonna weight those and make sure that it's more of a fair uh, option on, on those projects. They went over all the district corridors and uh, those numbers show how much uh, traffic comes through. So you can see on 84 and then 180, that's, 29,000 vehicles on, uh, or 29 percent of vehicles on 180 are trucks, and they had average 2,149 a day on 180. Um, on 84, 10,796 a day. Wow. Um, 47 percent north, 20 percent south on 208, 25 percent on 350. Then it got into I-20. So here's uh, 84, um, and they split it out. So north is 9,208, and then 10,796 south. There's 180 again, um, 29%, and then 1,949 a day. <coughs> Okay, so we can nominate projects, and it can be any of the, uh, it, there's certain things that can be nominated for these projects. So if there's a project that needs to be done, we, we fill this out, we send it to this committee, and that committee will determine whether that project uh, should be, where it should be ranked and with all the other projects. Um, we can send pictures or videos or anything else along with these, um, just to add more to it, but this is the basic form that we'll send in and you each have a copy of it. HSIP off system. So this is any road, county road, um, any of those. So, um, so the first one was just state roads? Yeah. Yeah, that was just state roads. And now we're getting into any roads. And then they talked about um, the road to zero, Texas fatalities per day. Um, and we're on track to beat last year. That's fatality trends, uh, different age groups, uh, the year, the light condition. Daylight was the highest. On system and rural roads, alcohol results. Um, and this is the Highway Safety Improvement Program. It's a federal aid program with purpose to achieve a significant reduction in traffic fatalities and serious injuries. There's another document in your packet. It shows the projects that can be, uh, it's two pages. 
fine print. Well, I'm sorry, four pages, five pages, fine print. And it lists all the different projects that can be done under this. And it's it's geared more towards safety measures. Um, and th these are paid 100%. It used to be 80%. They changed it to 100%. So you can turn these in and, and these projects can get done. Um, pedestrian signals, guide signs, warning signs, uh, flashing yellow arrows, um, guardrails. What they say no on is uh, construct paved shoulders, widen paved shoulders, widen lanes, install sidewalks. Those are the types of project, projects that can't be add left turn lane, add right turn lane, things like that. So you can go over those and see what kind of things they can do. Um, milled center line rubble strips is a yes. Profile center line markings, and these can all be done on county roads as well as as uh, state roads. So a lot of work. No, well, yeah, no, 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 no. Bridge, no. Can you put a bridge in this creek? And... Oh, okay. It's getting dangerous. Right. We can add that to that nomination form. Two the last. Yeah, and that's one thing they do look at is the, the rats. So, yeah, and we can absolutely put that in that nomination form. Um, and that's the oversight, review and approval of HSIP guidance documents. Documents, monthly project letter, letter reports, annual assessment of program. And this requires that TxDOT remains in compliance with FHWA requirements. Um, that's their emphasis areas, roadway and lane departure speed related, intersection safety, occupant protection, impaired driving, district, district driving, vulnerable road, vulnerable road use of pedestrian. That's the breakdown of funding. The district off system is 10%. So they said that's about two to 300,000 per year for those smaller projects that we can try to get into. Right, yeah, yeah, no. Um, like I said, it pays up, to, it pays 100%. You and I talked about that for a minute. It, where it used to be 80%, it's now 100% that the project is covering. So. And that's their factors, uh, what they look for as to why to do these projects high crash locations and clusters. Target project is subject to a benefit cost analysis. SII is the ratio of annual savings and preventable crash costs, uh, the safety improvement in that. The main thing we need is a no to. Huh. What's that? Resurfacing and right. widening roads. Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> and, and that's because that budget is not there. It's only 10% of that entire budget. Okay, I'm just saying with road stop. <laughs> yeah, if it says yes on there, yeah, yeah. Traffic control signalization. That's good. You strap that. Pavement marching. Strap them all. Traffic. I get it all the time. Installation of traffic signs, traffic lights, guardrails, impact attenuators, or concrete barrier in treatments. Yeah. The problem with that is, or is the money going to be there to maintain those? I, I don't think. Yeah. yeah. You know, that's what they're doing to us from the state all the time. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah, we're going to give you this money, you do this, and then everything's going to be great. And right. then you strap your roads, and then 10 years from now, or five years, right. they need to be re restrived. We don't have the equipment. <clears throat> right. The cost gets ex inexorbitable. It does. You know, if you're having a ton of wrecks on your roads, mm -hmm. do something if you're not. Yeah. You must be doing something good. Right. Exactly. So, um, good enough. <laughs> then they got into the different projects everywhere. Um, our uh, engineer has been here about a month now, so he's getting his feet on the ground. But this is Taylor County projects, Big Spring projects, Borden County, uh, Nolan County, all their projects. And it lists current year 24, 25, and 26, which we're in 27. These are Snyder. Um, they're going to do 180 or too long. That's uh, and they said they will have lots of millions. 
So, but it did it what? Last year? Yeah, there's going to do two different sections of it now. Um, they did take some money. <coughs> yeah. That, um, what road is that? Where the ribbon cutting was the other day? Mm -hmm. 1220 road. That's a 2026 project. And that's going to be really rough by then, so maybe they'll move that up sooner. But you can see 1609 down there is a 25 project. Um, they, they, they listed several different projects that they're going to be working on. Um, the first project they're going to be doing is the bridge at Avenue E. They start that next month. And we're just going to swing in between but that's kind of an overview of what we went over um, in that. I wanted to make y'all aware that this is going on. And if we have any projects that we feel like TechStop should do, um, there's a way to do it now. And uh, this committee will score those. And, and so you're saying for us with the 10%, they'd put up these signs on our road and stuff, or we would they would get them and we would install them? Or I think, yeah, I think they'll come in and do these projects, is my understanding. Well, and it's 100%. That they I can like. tell you the projects that they need to do yeah. on their own state highways. They're, they've already told us that they're going to stop putting county road signs showing this road ahead mm -hmm. whenever they get to where they're no longer, what do they call it? Uh, reflect the little. It's, yeah, it's reflect. Yeah, no, you it's, got it's yeah anyway, <laughs> reflectivity. If the reflection goes away, yeah. like it's supposed to, they're going to take them down, and the only way that they'll be back up is if we yeah. hire someone to do the specs, right? They do them according to text doc specifications, and then we pay for them, and they, right. they'll put them up on their roads. Okay. That, that's what they need to start back with, right? Okay. Is keeping those because it is difficult for a lot of people, yeah. To have enough warning from the little signs we put there at the road, right? You know, which can cause an accident. Go slamming on their brakes trying to turn onto that road, and yeah, they just need if they'll take care of that, that'd be great. That's a, that's a pretty good cost. Probably take up the 10 percent. But those flashing signs and stuff like we put up over there on uh, 137, those things they cost a lot, right? Yeah, they do, you know, and they're already broken. Are they? Good? Yeah, all well, somebody did. It. Just tap them with a big they can fall off. Stop signing it. Saws them off. Just hold it off. Exactly. So I yeah. believe it. Everybody wants one of those in their room. Curve signs. They're all gone. And we replace those all the time. Stop hitting signs. They take them. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So anyway, that's the update on oh. I, I got one more suggestion for those guys. Okay. If you go out on 180 and where their right of way ends, the pavement does not end there. It ends at the high, at the edge of the road. They do not extend it across their right of to the to the right of way where where County Road begins and their right of way ends. Mm -hmm. There's 15 foot there that they did not put any. Didn't do any renewal or anything, potholes and everything else. So we have to repair. So they want to fix something, fix your roads and, and put our signs up. They'll take all their 10 percent, 100 percent up, 100 percent or 10 percent. Well, yeah, for yeah, for a county road, it's a state road. They won't, you know, stop sign. They're right away. They won't touch it. My gracious, they got you get potholes that deep. I'm getting one of them. Yeah, I'm trying to stay there's all this money. Yeah, and they're cutting us back farther and farther all the time as far as the amount of money that we have without. I mean, the few are paying the bill. Right. Too many exemptions, too many unfunded methods. But they're going to fix it all by getting rid of property tax and 
Yeah. 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 Some way. <laughs> yeah. Good. All right. We're to M. Court to discuss and consider intent from Precinct 3, Commissioner Sean McCown, to lease or purchase a new motor grader, including the cost of a different contract. Very yes for this to be on the agenda. Yes. And so we're four precincts. And I know you said in the at last court meeting that you told us that you, what you wanted to do. And I've been looking at some of the assets that we have, and I've been talking to Jeff because I knew what kind of condition Precinct 4 is in. Mm -hmm. It was somewhat like what I was in whenever I first came into uh, Precinct 1. There was nothing to work with, and what I had to work with was junk, and it broke down all the time. My guys were continuously mechanicing rather than doing their job of what they needed to do to keep the road safe. And so I know Jeff has a truck that is down. I mean, it's just junk. You know it. Uh, he's got a water trailer that is got a rust, full of rust. Uh, and that's nowhere near the cost of a motor grader. But I also noticed that, that you have four motor graders uh, in your precinct, which when I first came in, we all had two. And uh, I, I believe that we all need three. We get very little rain anymore. I mean, even whenever I first came in, we got more rain, it seems like, than we do now. And it, to really get over all of our roads that are 120 miles, we got 120, 130 mile roads. You got, you got some extra, Doug. <laughs> whenever the census, 14 miles. So you lost 14 miles. Um, we're all about the same, one, one, two, and three. And so I just feel like it'd be better if you'd sell two of your motor graders, buy one that, that, that you need. Okay, and that may be, you just said one last time. I did, yeah. I did. Yeah. But we're going to see okay. where that goes. Okay. And, and let Jeff try to get back to where he doesn't have a broken arm because, I mean, we got four precincts and one of them is broken. Yeah. We really need to get him back up to speed and actually utilize the machinery that we truly need for the miles of road that we have. He actually had five machines, mm -hmm. had seven or eight hands, you know, because he's got 243 miles, I believe. And so that's what I'm requesting. You know, we, we always talk about, well, where's the money going to come from? Well, yeah. we got somebody broken. I think we need to fix them. Mm -hmm. and, 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 okay. 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 That's all I'm asking is that we get him, let's get him back in order, and then we'll take care of, of whatever we else we need to. But let's, I mean, I think you also have three belly dumps and trucks. And I think you and I have, you have two or three? I have two. two I have three. Dumps. You have three. And okay. The third one, when I took office, was sitting out back. Wheat. Oh, that's where you come from. It was already there. I had some of that, but I sold it. You know, if you got something back there that's growing up in weeds, sell it because it's that's a good one though. Now, what, what kind it of, is. Oh, it is. It's it is. Yeah, it was on the jump list. Yeah. Oh, so it's not noise anymore. No. Oh, okay. <laughs> oh, okay. So, so you got three viable trucks and trailers. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And you've helped me. I, I'm not trying. I'm not against you. Uh, I just think that we need to have some commonality between mm -hmm. us that have less amount of roads and those that have a hundred miles, a hundred more than a hundred miles more than we do. Uh, I think we need to make him whole and, and then look at what we've got and see if, if we can make this thing work more efficiently and well, I don't have an issue. Okay. I don't, we're always talking about repair bills. <clears throat> I agree. Oh, I think you should, I think you should get, I've seen your, the year models that you have, 2007 was the is the oldest. Mm -hmm. I think it needs to be getting rid of and go back to. I think we need to get to where we have three machines, a piece in one, two, and three. We need five, probably four or five, at least probably four, in in precinct four. Mm -hmm. If that works for him, he's got more plenty roads than him. I mean, his pavement is nowhere, and so he he's he's got to lay those roads, and and he can't do it with with three. And, and he's going to have four once a new one comes in. I think you need a new one. You need to get rid of the two that are older 
and, and let's stay within the five year warranty period and then sell it, sell those machines. I don't know if y'all can do it or not. I do it. Uh, I have done it in the past. Sell those machines for as much as, as what we paid for them uh, because contractors pay more than what we do. So they'll take our machines. If we'll do that, work together, get it done and keep those machines because of, as I've said time and time again, you've got electronic everything. <clears throat> Uh, you've got sensors galore. I mean, even now they're coming out and they break down. So one sensor goes out, my machine, the new machine, four, three or four years ago, was down in the shop for six weeks. And that's where they got the part in. And then another two weeks before they got it back. So that's what I'm asking, is that we, let's get him healed. And, and, and at the same time, if you sell your two, get one. You know, let's start building back. Well, let's... You don't make two no. <laughs> I'll take the good age. <laughs> one, two, one. I know you got some repairs to do. That's okay. One good one. <clears throat> one good one. <clears throat> He's already got jump. <laughs> <laughs> and, and he knows to, he knows you better. It's <laughs> not just equipment. We need to pick up vehicles. They're the same. Mm -hmm. I mean, I've I'm got there. a pickup sitting on the backyard on the back fence, a truck, another truck that needs me sitting there. Uh, and then we got rid of two that were just not being used because one of them had a knock on it, another one looked like a mosquito fogger going down the road. Uh, and we weren't spraying mosquitoes. <laughs> <laughs> I've, got water, I've got a water cutter and have a water well. I want to keep it leaking. Yeah, we're putting it up. <laughs> yeah. Water well? <laughs> then my phone right here. Okay. Yeah. That's all. Right. Play Doh. Yeah. Oh, okay. <laughs> JB Well. No, it's Water Well. Let <laughs> <laughs> well, that, that one that's right there. Yeah. Well, that's kind of hole in it. Yeah. What well, does it uh, look like? I have a price. What does the um, because we, we have a built tank, stainless steel. What does one of them cost? I have a cost. What, like your water trailer? Chox will cost about 49000 That's what, it, now that's, guys, that's five, six years ago. So you, you know how much that uh, the thing went up. <laughs> yeah. The went up 100000 so Yeah. You'll have one of my prices. For, uh, for PP. Yeah, exactly. But if you sell two machines, you're going to be a long way into that and at least purchase it to the end of the of five years. Right, because yeah. as it stands now, because I told you about selling my leeches. Oh, I didn't know. I didn't understand. I just thought you said you were selling one. And, and then well, buying yeah, one. But, but yeah. you're saying you're talking about two that you're selling. <laughs> yeah. Okay. One thing we'll bring the motor in it by. Okay. And so it'll sell better with a brand new motor in it. So you got transmission. Oh, the transmission's out on it. No. Oh, the other one will be the transmission. Oh, okay. And all that mess with, with uh, the transmission that we put in it was faulty. The, they got more of a ship the other day. I had to take the guard off. And that guard was had the wires on the end of them solenoids mashed down. We would put a pair of that, everything come back. And there was nothing in the filter. So that's about all I'm gonna say about that. Hey, that one hold then. It's working again. Yeah, because what we did, because we have the transmission in one. And the other <laughs> yeah. We took the motor. That was a good one that the transmission went out of. So we'd have another machine. And then we put the motor in the one that was done. So you put the new motor rebuilt transmission into one machine, so you've gotten the whole machine. No, one of them's new transmission. Oh, okay. So you bought a new transmission motor and you put it in. Rebuilt. 
Got it. Got it. But anyway, yeah. we lost. We made an issue with that. Yeah. Uh, I'm not going to yeah. elaborate, but we figured it out. Good. Good. And they run it all one day. No problem. Okay. Anyway, but no, I don't have an issue. I know what Jim's place is. Yeah. Yeah. Well, we're always talking about if we don't have money. And so if we don't have money, then let's fix the one that's broke. Sure. And then also at the same time, if you sell two of your machines, I, I'm, I'm for you getting a, a new one for sure to get started sure. back to being in warranty all the time because that's what's killing us. Not, yeah. only, not only is the, the, the money $50,000 for transmission, how much for a motor? Well, that's rebuild. Cat wanted hundred and ten for a motor. And See what I'm talking about? And, and, and what does it cost to get one of them down here from Love of Gravelly? Three hundred dollars, four hundred. I don't think I'd do it. I don't either. Before we so you see what we're doing. We need to do our job. We're, we're down. <clears throat> we're we're paying them to to come and go four, five hundred, six hundred mm -hmm. dollars a time, and on top of that, we're we're we can't do anything because we don't have a machine. So I just think we need to if we can get back to commonality with us three and then give him what he needs because he's a long way from it. It's not just a truck. I mean he needs another hand, he needs he needs five motor graders, really. Uh, but the, I know there's money issue there somewhere, so we've got to I mean the least way is the way to go. It costs less and more of us can get machines that need them. But at the end of that lease, you got a balloon and, and Angel's ready to go home. No, I have an appointment as well. <laughs> Sorry. Okay. I think we I think we ran that horse around a lot longer. Yeah. Yeah. I, so, I checked out for you. You're gonna help him sell here because you know how to do this. Well, I mean, I can. Have, I've absolutely. It's so simple. You take pictures of everything. You get your hours. You get the picture of your tag that says the uh, den, the den, den numbers on it. And once you get those pictures, you start calling uh, your buddies that are in this big book that we get. Every one of us get this book about this thick every year and tells you every commissioner that's in the state. Call them, all your precinct three or all your precinct two. I call them my precinct one. You call them your precinct four. And somebody's going to want that machine. That's what's happened for me. Now, it used to be is so much easier because I get it on eBay and do it. But it was five hundred dollars maximum. Now it's it's five percent of whatever you sell it for. You sell it for four hundred thousand. That that gets expensive. That's twenty thousand bucks. I'm not going to pay eBay twenty thousand dollars to sell a machine. So it's taxed a little bit. Yes, it's not worth ten cents. <laughs> no, because nobody looks at it. They don't have a menu eBay. Okay, well, I'll get with you but yes, in the time. Sure, absolutely. See how it goes. You take some good pictures. And, well, yeah. yeah. Well, I, I can share that with any one of you anytime. It's, it's a pain in the neck. Clean it up. Take, make your guys take the pictures if you don't like taking pictures. <laughs> I take them, you know, inside and out. And then, then number, if they, anybody wants pictures, I send it to them. And, I, and I, okay. it's work. Okay. We couldn't do it. Yes, sir. Okay. Angela, you need about 15 minutes. Mm, yeah. Or you need, you want to go ahead and do it now? Um, well, I'll wait because I need to hear what y'all say about the salary survey. Okay. Can I ask a huge favor? She mm. needs to go do payroll. I need to go get back on payroll. All right. So okay. if you could approve the, or look at the treasurer's report so I can get back to payroll, 200 employees would appreciate it. <laughs> <laughs> y'all know that. Okay, you told me that at the beginning. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Well, I didn't want to mess up y'all's order, but um, no. I need to get back no, down there. I don't know if you haven't done it in time. So <laughs> <laughs> let's go to like a little louder. <laughs> so was there no action on I get off there right now. No, no action. <laughs> All right, court to consider approval of Treasurer's monthly report for March 2024, the month monthly personnel information report and a quarterly investment report. We'll do all three all at once. Perfect. <laughs> Thank you. Uh -huh. <laughs> all in favor. 
Thank you. Thank you. I'll get some of your home right now. I'll watch the rest of it while I finish payroll. Oh, you can watch it? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, just stick it on my ear and I'll watch it. Yeah, Thank you. Thank you. All right, let's go ahead and do the county auditors March 2024 monthly financial report. We did that. Any questions on her financial report that you got in email form? It's on the website. I don't know if it got sent as the email, but it is on the website. And I will send out y'all here in a little bit, but it has already been posted there. You know that. Okay. It won't be printed in here. I can print. Do you need a copy printer, Melody? You have to have it printed. Really? Yeah, because I mean, I have to scan all this in. <laughs> I mean, I can print it myself if you email yeah. it. Well, it's. I think we can have one, one print copy because she has to put it together oh, a certain point. So I'll have Karen bring her printed copy to you. Okay. Okay. I make the motion to approve. Yeah. Yeah. All in favor. All right, we're gonna go back up to N because I know Bill's itching to go. Get back to painting. <laughs> According to discuss, we consider Twilight Golf at Surrey County Golf Course to include adjustable golfing hours with a discounted rate. How's it going, Bill? Good, good, good. You settling this in? This is exciting. <laughs> you settling in out there? We're trying. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It looks great, but I don't want to miss an opportunity to thank all of you all for the car pass. Please come out and look. They're looking great. Got a ways to go. Yeah. It's going to make a difference. It's going to make a big difference. You guys are responsible for that, so appreciate it. So, Twilight. Right. Uh, it's pretty common in a lot of courses. It's an, it's only on weekdays, Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday, uh, your down days. Uh, right now, our policy out there, I don't know if you're aware, has been all carts have to be in at 7. I definitely want to change that, whether you, this gets approved or not, to no cars out after 7, because people really want to play after work. The idea of Twilight Golf is it's Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. It's, it's a discounted rate. Nine holes is $25. That's the green fee and the card. Waive the card. It's, so it's only $15 to come out and play nine holes. It takes about two hours to play nine holes. Um, and it would get people out there playing more people. Some revenue generates some revenue. Another revenue stream. Not a whole lot. So get people talking about it. Get them back out there. And maybe over the years fade it out because it wouldn't be necessary anymore because it'd be so popular. But no one's coming out there in the evening, primarily because it's closed. We'll, we'll stop that one way or another. I'd like to start the twilight golf though, and Memorial Day, once uh, people are out from school, uh, one of my key staff members is a high school student. Kind of want to make sure he's there for that. And uh, that, that, that's the gist of it. It's uh, just an opportunity to have people out there, give them a just kind of rate good kids and families out there. You know, 12 and under already play free. So now dad or mom can come out with them and maybe get just nine holes. All right. What we'll do is we'll just say after seven, no carts out because we'll base it on sunset. Sunset in August is 9 30 or so, nine o'clock. I will definitely get some. I know you guys have part of the interview. We want to be open later. That's certainly one way to alert people. And I can do that through different means. Yeah. And when you sent that to me and said that <clears throat> all carts in by 7 p.m., mm -hmm. I didn't realize that was yeah. a, uh, a policy or a, and, and that, like you said, that's one of the conversations we've had was we want to be open later. Yeah. You know, people get off at 5 or 6 o'clock in the evening, they want to go play golf, and you got to be in by 7, that doesn't give you any time. And, and the that policy, I, I it's going to go away one way or the other. I presume I can just do that myself to stay open later to make some money. But this is just—it's very common. Twilight golf and other courses. It's also common to have lesser rates during the week. We won't do that, but um, don't intend to do that anyway. But just something that—that's that, that, the thing about the golf course. It's you know—is it the country club? Is it the county course? Is it you know? You'll see I'm wearing a shirt that I want that will be on a line item. It needs—it needs a uh, to be kind of like what other courses, what people expect mm -hmm. when they go other places. Our rules are all kind of Jimmy jangled out there. <laughs> Two times for a lot of things that people have gotten away with. Uh, and, but but they go, they fully go someplace else and they see things like Twilight Golf or their staff dressed in uniforms or, or these other things. And uh, in my opinion anyway, 
to <clears throat> given the car pass that are going in, the quality of the course, we it needs to be taken up a notch in terms of what people expect when they go out. There's certainly public who had never been out there before and been played other other places. The members they'll, they'll, they'll love it. Certainly. <laughs> How do you how do you mitigate your time to where you know because we've already talked about with getting way too much overtime mm -hmm. for the superintendent? Have you figured out a way to do that with this extra well, hours? The the young man who who's so good. We have a great opener, and he's pretty much seven to noon. And then the young man who is so good, he comes after school, and so he comes rather early, and then now leaves at whatever seven or eight. He'll, I would I would move him back, and we he and I've discussed it to not coming in until five o'clock or so, and to nine, and then I would be there for the eight nine hours ten hours whatever it takes during the day to have overlapping both both shifts. And you're accepting applications right now, correct? You're accepting applications. I am. I am. Yes. Not getting bombarded with them yet. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so if you know somebody, send them my way. Can you a motion? No, I'm just asking if you need some extra work. It's amazing how we we see progress. Yeah, yeah. We have a newsletter, Bill. Thank we we have a newsletter. I know the judge has copied on it. I'll yeah. get all of you copied on it. Just, uh, uh, people seem to be enjoying that. The tech service that we talked about during the interview. It's not going to be impossible. It's just a little. Got to get the painting and stuff done first before. But we're getting we're getting there. Thank you. Good comment. Thanks. I'll make the motion to approve the twilight hours at for the twilight. What is it? Twilight, twilight golf. golf. So it'd, be, it'd be Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday only. Right. Yeah. Uh, probably the hours, the adjustable hours, because of sunset. Sure. Yeah. But for these purposes, six six to close it. Well, let's let's let you determine the time yeah. on that. Yeah. Because the sign really might. Right. Could, could, yeah. It's, yeah. The sun's going to go down at different hours through. Exactly. So we'll try we'll just let you determine. The two hour window. Yeah. We'll let you determine those hours and it'll be at $15, which includes nine holes in the. It includes it'll be $15. Holes. We'll put nine holes in the cart. Now, if you and I go play together, you still got to pay your 15. Sure. But the, yeah. Because the, the cart's included. Yeah. Okay. So, <clears throat> You got that? No. Okay. <laughs> well, thank you very much. And again, thanks a ton for the car paths. Okay. Everybody in the community, I speak for them. All right. Golf course supporters, anyway. All right. Well, thank yeah. you, Bill. I uh, appreciate what you're doing. Thank you. Absolutely. Absolutely. Uh, all right. We'll move on to. I'll let you go to painting. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> excited about that. Who, who knew a paint gun was. Uh, it gets so messy. <laughs> <laughs> I did. I, did I didn't tell you that. I didn't tell you that. Right, Thank you. You're welcome. Court to discuss and consider getting RFQs for the con conducting, not conducting, conducting of a salary survey in Sturry County. We put that in the budget this past year. I had forgotten about it until Angela reminded me the other day that we need to do a salary survey and the money is there to do that. It was what, 45. 45,000, I think is what we put in there. Um, I will say I've reached out in my listserv and um, the other people who've used, who've gone and done salary surveys have said it is a very long process. It takes a year for the entire survey. So yeah. we're not, I mean, we need to get going on it yeah. this year so that hopefully they'll have something for us during maybe budget season next year. Because, I mean, next month is budget time. Yeah. We're going to start in budget again. Yay. Yeah. 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 Oh, yeah. I got to ask just for everybody. Like, did you start your budget process yet? No, don't tell me that. I'll make a motion to go out for RFOs for conducting salary surveys. Q. Okay. For salary surveys. Screw it, Jim. All in favor. Uh, court discuss and consider an order adopting the property tech exemption for qualifying child care facilities. You know what? I'm going to wait on that. Let's go down to approving light item transfers and budget. Well, and it's certified revenue. And certified revenue. Let's, Let's certify the revenues then. Uh, grant SB 22, uh, XS 10, 
and funds received from the Democratic and Republican parties. Uh, as a reminder, the SB 22 for each of them, uh, we can prove that, but we can't really tell them what to do with that one state uh, once, we, once yeah. they get the funds. So the SB 22 is 175000 for the county attorney, 175000 for the district attorney, and 350000 for the sheriff's office. Um, all of it has to be tracked fully. I've already spoke, spoken to the district attorney, county attorney, and the sheriff about all the tracking procedures of it. But this is certifying the revenue. I will be doing budget amendments as the, like for the um, salary positions that the county attorney and the district attorney are hiring. I will be doing the budget <coughs> amendment probably at the end of every month because I have to place the money into the line <coughs> once it's been allocated and spent to the individual. So those will be monthly to track that. His, once he gets his, starts getting his equipment in, I'll do the budget member for that. Um, the other one is it's 10, 10 that have been sold, I believe, is Road and Bridge, um, 20107. And this is just to certify it right now. And then this is the Dem Democratic and Republican Party. It had been actually receded into the wrong line. It needed to be receded here and then certified and then placed by budget amendment into the correct line. So this is certifying that revenue, $3,280.30. <coughs> have a budget amendment in there to place it into the county clerk election expense line. Okay. Yeah. That's all the reimbursement. Yeah. yeah, but it was, you haven't spent that much money this year oh. <laughs> in that line, so you can't reimburse something you haven't spent. So it's, um, it will over inflate your line without the going through this. Oh, okay. Motion that we start to all additional revenue. So all in favor? Okay. And then we'll do the line on the for the budget amendment. Okay. There is one budget amendment that you don't, y'all don't have in your packets apparently, and uh, so I'll have to make a copy of it. But I want to go ahead and present it today so that she can get it. She talked about it earlier. Uh -huh. um, a little short line on transfers: the DA office office supplies seven hundred out of investigative expense. Then DA office equipment one thousand to five thousand for a thousand out of other equipment. IT, this is the line out of transfer from the library auto expense line of $500 into the IT auto expense line of $500 for the vehicle that y'all approve the transfer. The youth center maintenance and repair, $2,500 out of ground supplies, $2,500. They had to have repairs on the water line. Precinct 4, capital outlay, $5,000 plus. $756.79 out of operating supplies to balance the line. Golf course clothing allowance, a thousand out of utilities, a thousand. Um, he's, as he said earlier, he's getting like uniform shirts and stuff like that for them to, so that they look more professional. Those are all the line items. Budget amendments are. Um, County Clerk election expense, the three thousand two eighty seventy nine that I just certified. Then the EMS, um, there's two different ones for EMS. Both of these are the ones he talked about in the last court when I wasn't here. Um, he, had talked, he had asked permission to move the funds from Texas class to do this. This is the budget amendment placing in the line. Thirty one thousand four thirty seven seventy seven, and then seventy thousand. Hold on, one more. <laughs> this will make a copy of it here in a minute, but it's uh, records management in her records management expense line, 201130 This is for the co file agreement that y'all approved earlier for the imaging and indexing of criminal case. Energy <laughs> motion, I'll second. All in favor. All right. Um, Council Payne. <laughs> Uh, Count samples one million eighty three thousand two seventy nine eighty eight. All in favor? And I know normally that's an adjournment, but we're not going to adjourn this time. Uh, we're going to go back up to what you're discussing, considering its order adopting property tax exemption for qualified child care facilities. <laughs> All right. Uh, I got a questionnaire on this, and it is. You think it's in here? Yeah. 
There it is. Implementation of Prop 2 in your county. Um, following the passage of Proposition 2, Thank you, Josh. Uh, brought about by my legislative efforts, this is Royce West, Senate Joint Resolution 64. Mm -hmm. Counties and cities may now grant up to 100% tax abatement on property used to operate a child care center, subject to certain statutory restrictions that passed in Senate Bill 1145. I'm writing today to ask if your county has, is considering, or has decided against passing an ordinance to implement Proposition 2 benefits for child care counties in your county. And he wants us to fill out the attached form and return it in the closed envelope, which actually has a stamp on it, so that he can keep track of the status of Prop 2 efforts in each county. Um, and then there's an order adopting if we decide to adopt it. I gave you each a list of all of the, uh, the uh, child care facilities in Scurry County. Some of them are exempt because they are schools. Yeah, one from Abilene. Uh, Pat Harris? Yeah. Okay, so Pat Harris owns the building, um, but a child care facility is in it. And that's the right there by the cinema, that big here, right behind it. Oh, independent free school. Yeah. yeah. So, like I said, man, it is owned. Thank you, Sheriff. Appreciate you. Take care. Go away. That last <laughs> one standing. Oh, there. <laughs> Hang in there. Um, the time hanging there. We're about we're to go after this. Not this one. Really yeah, not this one. Which one? The one that's no. <clears throat> yes, yes, it is. Independent free school. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Independent free school is the one I'm But it, it's actually. Yeah, that's the owner of it, but the owner, the, the she owns the business, but Pat oh, Harris so owns the it, building. Right. Yeah, okay, yeah, okay. Um, so I don't know how the exemption would work for <coughs> Pat Harris. I'm not sure. Uh, yeah, you have United Methodist Church, First United Methodist Church that has one. They're exempt. You have Snyder ISD. <coughs> Kids under construction. It's seven hundred and thirty-three dollars and eighty cents a year in Scurry County. Um, Independent preschool is thirty-five oh nine, and then um, say kids under construction. It's fifty dollars, <coughs> and then there's one that is ex that has a homestead exemption. It's in their home. Um, one of the questions that Janet had about that was. If they have a homestead exemption, can they get a, this exemption? And you'll see the Workforce Development Division questionnaire here. Um, <clears throat> in there, it states that um, da, 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 da. there's that question that's in here. I'll throw them back page the first page. Okay, yeah. Um, <clears throat> they cannot, if they have a homestead, homestead exemption, they cannot get this exemption well so um, what we're able to do is anywhere from 50 to 100 percent um, property tax exemption for these few child care facilities and I think the total was you know you're looking at less than two thousand dollars total exemption total for all for all <clears throat> yeah you're looking at taxing instance so that can really discourage yeah so you don't have the taxing entities in there that I mean, it, it would just be for Scurry County, but yeah, um, you know, thirty-five dollars oh, from Independent Preschool, yeah, seven eighty-seven from Pat Harris, I think, since they lease it, they can get it. Um, That's a lot of paperwork to give somebody a seven hundred thirty-three dollars <laughs> and eighty cents, and then fifty dollars. So, I mean, you're not looking at a lot, and I think that they would have to do all the paperwork on it. That they're eligible for it. There are certain eligibility <clears throat> requirements. My only problem with that is they're they're charging you know, a profit for this. Nobody else gets a position. <laughs> and, and here's the other deal. There's the in some of these bigger cities, these businesses actually designate offices for daycare mm -hmm. uh, 
Are they going to be exempt if they, hey, this is designated? All right, so the first question here, which child care facilities are eligible for the exemption? A licensed child care facility, Texas Work Co Workforce Commission Rising Star Program participant, and have at least 20% of their children enrolled in PWC's child care services program. And I don't know if any of these do or not with the second two. I know they're all licensed child care facilities because you know, I looked that up. But the other two, I don't know. Well, you know, my deal is everybody else pays their taxes as a business. Uh, although I realize it's <clears throat> the amount of money to Scurry County is not going to make or break nothing. Sure. But by the same token, uh, they're charging for their services. If you give them a break, is it really going to change the cost to the people that need them? I mean, that's where I'm looking at because so many people cannot charge child care. They can't afford it. Oh, it's horrible. And so they have a have difficulty in finding a job that pays enough for them to even go to work to pay for childcare. Mm -hmm. But these these uh, amounts are not going to change that. It's going to put a few dollars back in their pocket. Yeah, well, they will, you know, going to go back. <laughs> not going to go to lower your childcare. No. no. Well, anything else? Else? Uh, yeah. Can you imagine the amount of money that was spent to do the study to even come up with something like this? To oh, say, no. I, I made a bill and here's so now it's in law and you can do it if you want to. Mm -hmm. wow. Wow. And I like Royce West. Or I did. <laughs> okay, so do I hear a motion one way or the other on this? More than one. What you, what's your thoughts, Judge? You know. Probably trying to oh, be. Oh, there's one. Uh, it's, it's, I mean, one business is $733. I don't know that that's even a month of someone's child care. I don't, I don't know what the cost is anymore. I, I it's um, expensive. Yes, uh, Noah's project and label when the stuff is already exempted 12 months ago. So I, I don't know. I, I could go either way on it. Um, I really could. Um, I was looking at the revenue that the county gets from it. It's less than two thousand dollars. It's nothing. not a huge no. deal. I, I, if it were, if we were a larger area, I can see the benefit for both sides. Um, there's a minute. I think I got one more. I have to say. Yeah, there's, there's two in there. Mm -hmm. yeah. So, uh, so I'll, I'll follow y'all's lead on this. What other good uh, businesses, I guess, for lack of a better word, is out there? Well, I, I don't know. Is Noah's Project, is it a Bible and C? Or, or would they yes. want to come back and yeah, say yeah they're not a they're not a child care facility no no I know it's with them. yeah we do this and they say well you know we're taking care of women oh it does or you know we're taking care of battered ladies or, right are we going to open up the door for more and more which where where it is going to run into money after a while yeah. I know there's a new facility out here on County kind of One Thirty Two that takes care of, of women that I don't know. Exactly. Oh, is that what it's called? It's a, 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 it like a unwed mother. Okay. Yeah. So, are they, I don't know what they're saying. Are they a 501? Yeah. Most, oh. most of the ones that you see that are like the jet school and stuff like that, they're, they're Head Start and they're getting help from the government. They're doing good of like 
helping people in need or discounted child care or free child care yeah. or, you know, and there's hoops you have to jump through. So those that are doing good and needing, um, giving back to the community are jumping through these hoops and doing what they're supposed to be doing and, you know, utilizing what the help that's out there. Now, your other ones that are out here, the independent preschool, your other ones, they're a for-profit business. It's a business, yeah. plain and simple. They're, they're not a 5013C, they're a business. Mm -hmm. right. I watch your kid, you pay me. Yeah. I pay my workers, that's a business. <laughs> We're not going to help them by giving that. Yeah. We're not going to help them. Like we already are kind of helping because we have the youth center going. Look at what we do there. Oh my goodness, we are definitely. And that's free. <clears throat> yeah, I just love that. Yeah. This. So it's our cut rate. I like that we decided against passing a proposition to us. <laughs> that's a motion. Okay. Is there a second? second. All in favor? Okay. I don't know yeah, which one of y'all one of y'all said it and, and summed it up perfectly was uh you know, is that gonna help the people that are going right. and paying their yeah, that's what I care about. Yeah. 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 Is that we're not paying thirty five dollars. <laughs> yeah. Or you're gonna use twenty thirty five dollars. You know, or seven hundred for that. Right. right. You're gonna be able to maybe buy some more toys or might you know yeah. but it's not it's not a can of paint for Christ's sake. Yeah. <laughs> Yes. Okay. All right. Um, we so that was on there twice. I I missed that. I, it was because it was done two different ways. Um, but so we covered that. We've covered everything except the uh, personnel matters executive session. Of course, convening executive session for personnel matters, section 551.0474, the Texas Government Court, court to Review Applications for the Library Director. And we will go in at 12.01.